Hello, and I'm Chad Hall. I'm one of the Cloud uh, Support Team Google admins for the state of Iowa, and I'll be walking you through some security things today. Um, Google protects our data. And how does Google protect our data? Well, Google was built cloud first. That means they built the entire infrastructure and the way they operate as a company architecturally as a cloud-based service. So they didn't have they don't have local equipment that they have to make cloud or they didn't start you know local make cloud they are cloud first so everything's approached from that perspective they trust nothing so they have a zero trust architecture and that's exactly what the like dod and those types of entities want to be built is a zero trust trust architecture and that's exactly what google has done zero trust they trust nothing so in and of themselves, their two servers actually don't fully trust each other and they have to authenticate with each other to trust each other. We detect, they detect everything. So they're always looking for malware, phishing, ransomware, supply chain attacks, all these other things. They, they detect all that and that's all part of the Google infrastructure and there's no add-ons or special products you have to buy or any of that kind of stuff. And lastly, they protect everyone with secure endpoints. So they, your Chromebooks, your phones, your um, laptop that you're using now, or whatever, they use Chrome, they have Chrome, which is an encrypted connection to Google, or if you're using Chrome OS, that's a completely encrypted uh, type of operating system. Statistics from Google, 99.9% uh, .9 or more spam and phishing messages are blocked from ever re reaching a user's inbox. Google, Google has five billion accounts as their user base. So worldwide, they get five times more message volume per day than their closest four competitors combined. So five times more of the four biggest competitors combined. So that's so much more email traffic. And uh, a neat one here is zero reported ransomware attacks on Chrome OS. So if you have a Chromebook, because that OS is completely encrypted and it is a Chrome OS, which is proprietary, there's no, has never been a reported ransomware attack ever on that. Okay, so us as a state has moved to Okta as our cloud identity provider. Um, and you all use it day to day, everybody does. And what Okta does is it's a single point of identity. So Google, asks Okta all the time, is this person supposed to be logged in? Yes or no? And Okta wants you to provide your email address, your password, and then provide some form of third two-factor authentication. And two-factor authentication is always something you know and something you have, like your phone. So you know your password, but you have your phone, and that's why you could push notifications on Okta Verify and say, yes, that's me or you get an SMS text, or you get a phone call. Those are all things you have. Those things you can receive. So then that is the way Okta verifies that it's you. The state of Iowa has moved to Okta because inside of Okta, we have lots of controls. Like we don't allow anybody outside the United States to log in to Okta. It's just that connection has dropped. We know about it, but that connection has dropped. You have to know something and have something to get in. Um, unless you're on premise, uh, some of you that are always going to the office are like, well, I don't have to use my phone. Well, you don't because you're physically in one of the buildings. So we know you're supposed to be there. And so we just let you right in. But Okta is an industry leader. And so it it is one of the top industry leaders. And we used it because of Workday. We needed a single unified uh, authentication method for Workday. And so that gives us SSO or single sign-on. It gives us multi-factor authentication and Okta also is great at stopping data breaches and that kind of stuff because somebody if somebody tries to use your credentials just your username and password somewhere else Okta will say well is this you and you say no that's not me locks their session out they can't log in so that's great so Okta is an extremely helpful thing I know sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain when you're dealing with a you know phone and you're trying to log into some things but it is it absolutely elevates the state's position and security extremely high. Okay, so we're gonna go over customer data. Customer's data is data that you, 
the customer has provided Google by using one of their services, whether it be email or calendar or chat or docs or sheets or whatever it is you use, that's customer data. Customer data inside of Google, when it's being transmitted or shared inside the Google Workspace infrastructure, so anybody else that's on Google Workspace for the state of Iowa, that data never leaves Google's encrypted, encrypted private fiber network. So it is, always in, it is always encrypted in transit and at rest. So always encrypted at transit and rest. It never leaves the confines of that and it's completely encrypted. Data for storage. So say you wrote a document. Um, that doc is when you, when you exit out the doc or when you're writing it, especially when you exit out, the doc is split into hundreds if not thousands of little pieces. Each little piece is encrypted with its own unique encryption key and then is wrapped by another encryption key. And then those little pieces are spread out over hundreds of servers in a, in a Google data center. So as in this picture, if somebody could, there's no way you can, but could take a rack of servers out with a forklift, you would literally not get any data. Yeah, because the data is actually split across so many servers across the entire data center. And because it's double encrypted, it's unopenable because you don't have the key master. And so the key master is the only one that can open the wrapper key. And then once you get into the inner key, you can't unencrypt that inner key without all the other little pieces, which are stored on servers elsewhere. So data is just not stealable, physically stealable. Uh, Google has lots of compliance offerings, and we use quite a few. Um, Google is compliant in PII, HIPAA, PHI, and FERPA, and that FERPA is for education. So customers who are subject to HIPAA and wish to use Google Apps with PHI must sign a business associate agreement, with, which OCIO has done on behalf of the state when we went to Google. We had that BA in place with Google. And when OCIO set up Google Workspace, we use the Google HIPAA implementation guide to to be in compliance with the BAA, so thus we are HIPAA compliant. So, and other compliances, Google Workspace services are HIPAA, FedRAMP, FERPA, and ISO 27018 certified. That last ISO certification is the international standard for protection of PII in public clouds. So we're so we're covered on all of those fronts. So if you ever need to know, oh, are we PII certified? Yes, yes, we are because of the ISO 27018. Compliance, non-native compliance right now is CGIS, but that is coming soon uh, via client-side encryption where we'll hold the keys instead of Google holding the keys. And the other one is, is FTI, and FTI is not just social security numbers, that's its that's actually data that the IRS has physically or electronically handed you directly or the Social Security Administration. We are not FTI certified, so we don't store FTI in Google data. That is coming eventually, but right now it is not native for the compliance. I want to talk a little bit about Gmail security. So email is, of course, encrypted in transit and at rest. And we've talked about the rest and the double you know, break everything up into two pieces or two uh, two encryption keys, and it's broken up across hundreds of pieces across servers. But there's another encryption level, and it, they're in transit, and we use it. We call it transport layer security. It so when we're sending as the state of Iowa to an outside entity, we create an encrypted tunnel from us from Google servers to their servers across the public internet uh, using transport layer security. And as, as the fact shows here, 96 percent of our email traffic to and from the internet to the state of Iowa, so us sending or receiving from outside entities, 96 percent of it is, is all sent and received in an encrypted tunnel. Now, transversely, inside the state of Iowa, everything's encrypted. It's 100 percent. So now there's a second layer we do have. It's called Six Secure Mail. We call it G Secure Mail here. 
Um, we're always looking for social security numbers or credit cards. You can put secure mail on the subject line of a message and it will be sent securely. Say you're sending to an outside entity. You don't know if they use transport layer security. You, it's really sensitive information and you don't know if they meet all those other standards. You can always use a secure mail. That creates a little mailbox for them you know, on a web interface it's, uh, at Zix that they need to log into and then they can see the message and they can reply to it. And that is 100% all encrypted in transit and at rest too. Zix is also certified. Um, we have security and analytics tools. So we have Security Center and it's a thing inside the admin console, which I'll show you a couple of graphs here in the next slide. We also have something called the investigation tool. We use it as admins and so does the information security office. So if you have uh, somebody sends in, there's an account breach on the outside, say, and they send a bunch of emails, you know, hey, look at this form and respond. We know it's phishing. Um, we can actually use the investigation tool to look who all has received this message. Did they mark it as phishing or spam? And we can retract that message or pull it back. But we can also do other things with the investigation tool. It, it covers a lot more. So if somebody's having a problem with a group or some other issue or something got changed by another group um, member or moderator, or not moderator, but an owner, we can actually look in and see the log and see what's been changed and when and by who, and we can let you know. Inside the investigation tool, there's something called the access transparency logs. Those logs are the logs that we have. They're immutable logs that tells us what Google has touched. So Google can only touch our data if we ask them to via a support ticket. They have internal policies that they have to go through internal levels of check. I need to help a customer with this. And then they have to go through a process inside of Google to be allowed to even touch customer data. And when they touch customer data, it shows up in the access transparency logs. We can clearly see who touched it, what they touched and why they touched. They actually have to write a statement about why they're looking at that data. So we have all of that. And they're funny enough are basically blank right now because Google really hasn't ever had to look at our data because we haven't had a lot of tickets where they, that has come up. And then we have a last page, which is security health page. It shows all of our security settings laid out. And at a glance, we can see what security settings are on and off and where they're at and, and that they're all on and those types of things and, and what I'll use. It kind of gets more technical because it's inside the uh, admin center. But here I'll show you a couple of reports from the security dashboard. This is email flow from March 28th, April 1st of this year. So just a few weeks ago. As you notice, uh, in that time frame, we dealt with 2.1 million messages. Now, the graph on the other side under user reports, those are people using the buttons inside of Gmail. So you get an email in your mailbox and it has that orange banner that says, is this safe? Or, or, or you know, and you can say, look safe to me. And you've all probably seen that. That's the blue line that says, oh, Google maybe thought it was spammy, but we're not sure. So the market with the orange banner and you said, no, it's not. So that's what the blue line represents. The red line represents something going to your inbox and you're like, oh, that's spam. And as you notice, the line is higher on Monday, March 28th. So, um, so the line is, is much higher then. And so people are classifying information at that point. And so that it drops down during the week to the much lower level. And those buttons are found inside of Gmail. And I'll show you what those buttons are here in just a minute. The other buttons, the other button that they have, and I'll show you where that is, is you can mark something as phishing. Um, those buttons are real and they really work. And here I'll show you what they are. So down here in the lower part of the, the slide, there's the report spam button that's right next to the trash can. And that works really, really well. That's real time. So if you mark it as spam, or on the three buttons on the side, uh, on the far right side of Gmail on a message, you can report spam or phishing. Those buttons work and they work in real time. So first of all, when you choose one of those, it sends it to our admin center. And as you can see in this little uh, part of the slide over here on the side where it says user reported phishing, we see it right away, but Google's AI sees it instantly. And, and when I mean instantly, it's instantly. And it says, oh, well, that's phishing. So then sometimes you'll see messages that will come up if it's already been delivered to your inbox. It says, someone in your organization has reported this as phishing or spam. 
that's the AI coming back and actually doing its job, doing what it needs to do. And that happens in real time. Those buttons really do work. Please use them because that actually tells Google AI what it should be looking for, what it should be stopping, and what it should be passing. So uh, we get alerted for it. Google's AI gets alerted for it. And action is taken. And so if a campaign is starting, campaign we need a lot of spam messages coming in, say you're really quick on it, and you're like, oh, that's spam. The rest of them are coming in. Google's AI will learn about that in real time and then stop the rest of them coming in to the environment like right away. So we are our own best advocates for even better security. So those buttons are real. They work. Please use them. And if you have email that goes into the spam folder, just leave it. Unless it's read, you know, unless it's not spam, then you can say not spam, put it back in your inbox. But if it is, or it's phishing, just leave it in your your spam label because that's where it's supposed to be and delete it or whatever, or leave it there. That was Google saying, you know, I'm gonna let you see it, but we're not real hundred percent sure. I would just leave it there and just don't even bother with it. Uh, if you want to talk about retention schedules and our policies around that, so we have a product called Google Vault that can see inside of Gmail and Drive and chat and Meets and uh, Hangout. They can see everything. So we store any data that you provide, um, you know, keeps all those things, any data that you provide into our, our domain, we have in, in Google Vault. We can retain, we retain it forever and there's no expiration date on it. So we have it. This is for FOIA requests. We can do restores. Uh, with Google Vault, we can export stuff with Google Vault and have kind of offline storage. We don't really like to do that as much, but we can do it. But we hold everything indefinitely. So every, we have everything forever. So to recover anything like that, um, or if you need to do a Freedom of Information Act, which is the most popular, you submit a ticket with OCIO, uh, somebody on the OCIO team, Google team works on it, or we actually have a new discovery team. They then, of course, search Vault, and we can either restore it to Gmail, Chat, or Drive, or we can provide it to our e-discovery system, and somebody can, a lawyer can go through it and see what's releasable and not releasable. That is super common. We do them every day, all day. Uh, here's some other resources. So there's Google Workspace Security and Trust, Google Workspace uh, Service Summary, and the Google Space Google Workspace Security White Paper. The white paper is really um, Technically advanced, it's really good though. It has a lot of detail and it. it's really good. I've read that one. 